The film Harold and Maude is a black comedy that was made in 1971 and is now considered a cult classic. I chose to deconstruct this film because there are many examples of binary opposites throughout the film. Here is a quick plot summary. Harold is a young adult who is preoccupied with death. He regularly attends funerals of people he doesn't know, and he frequently stages mock suicides and other violent acts against himself in front of his mother, who usually ignores him or barely responds. He comes from a very privileged upbringing, and there is no father present in the household. His mother is very socially proper, but is emotionally unavailable for Harold. Maud, on the other hand, is a very quirky elderly woman who is nearing her 80th birthday. Her life is very different from Harold's. She lives in a train car, she steals cars, is a Holocaust survivor, and is also preoccupied with death. She too regularly attends funerals, which is where Harold and Maud meet. They develop a relationship and they end up making a positive difference in each other's lives. Jacques Derrida, born in 1930 in Algiers, was a philosopher who is best known for his theory of deconstruction. Derrida's theory of deconstruction builds on the structuralist and post-structuralist thinkers like Michel Foucault. Though Derrida's theory of deconstruction is generally applied to written text, the practice of this critical theory can also be applied to film, speech, law, psychoanalysis, aesthetics, art criticism, architecture, theology, feminism, gay and lesbian studies, ethics, and political theory. Here are some examples of deconstruction in art and architecture. Derrida's influences were Nietzsche, Heidegger, Saussure, Levina, and Freud. Friedrich Nietzsche was known for challenging Christianity and traditional morality and was influential to many 20th century thinkers. Martin Heidegger is known for working with the concepts of phenomenology and existentialism. Ferdinand de Saussure is associated with semiotics and influenced Derrida through his study of linguistics and semiology. Emmanuel Levina was known for his philosophy of ethics. Sigmund Freud is, of course, known for developing the technique of psychoanalysis. The film Harold and Maude challenges our assumptions of age and gender and subverts culturally acceptable or recognizable binaries that are as active or relevant today as they were in the 70s when the film was made. An adult child binary is evident when Harold's mother, who in an attempt to find a wife for Harold, sets up an interview with a potential date and Harold childishly pretends to set himself on fire in full view of the young woman. In binary opposition to this childish behavior, Harold exhibits mature adult behavior when he treats Maud very tenderly and respectfully. An action apathy binary is seen in Maud's determination that a tree on public property be replanted in a forest versus the apathy Harold's mother exhibits during one of Harold's mock suicides. But let's look further into how the film subverts culturally acceptable binaries. Acceptance versus rejection. Harold both accepts and rejects his mother's value system. He respects his mother's request that he is home to meet the dates she has set up for him, but he completely subverts her intentions by performing violent acts in front of each of the young women. He accepts the jaguar that his mother gives him as a gift, but subverts his mother's value system by taking a torch to the jaguar and modifying it to look like a small hearse. The binary of young-old is found in the age difference between Harold and Maud, but this binary is subverted because an older woman dating and having sex with a much younger man is culturally unacceptable and disturbing to most people. Gender roles in a young-old relationship are also subverted. In our society, if an older man were to have a relationship with a younger woman, chances are pretty good that it would be found much more culturally acceptable than the reverse, as in the case of Harold and Maude. The binary of life-death is an overarching theme throughout the film. However, there are deeper meanings that we can uncover. Harold and Maude was made at a time when there was a great deal of civil upheaval in American society. The civil rights movement was in full swing, the Vietnam War was causing severe disillusionment with the U.S. government, and the military draft would still be in effect until 1973. Harold faked his death repeatedly when so many people were actually dying in the Vietnam War. Deeply immersed in the culture of death, Harold seemed unable to celebrate life until he met Maud, yet he never actually takes his own life. Ironically, Maud, who was able to celebrate life with gusto and abandon, 
gave herself a time limit for how long she would live and takes her own life on the eve of her 80th birthday. Harold's love for Maud gives Maud joy right up until her death, and Maud's death gives Harold a new outlook on life. Harold showed Maud how to die, and Maud showed Harold how to live. In the final scene of the film, Harold symbolically destroys his jaguar slash hearse, which further symbolizes the binary of life and death. For the first time in the film, he is carefree and finally at peace with himself. Well, if you want to sing out, sing out. And if you want to be free, be free. Cause there's a million things to be. You know that there are. And if you want to live high, live high.